Hey, it really is wonderful to see all of you. I love, already I see a Bible open. That's exciting. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to grab a Bible, or if you have your own, open that up. Or if you happen to have the Bible app on your phone, or your, uh, whatever you call it, notebook, or um, tablet, thank you. Uh, I want to encourage you to please go ahead and open up to that. Uh, and I want to continue to encourage you to do that. And I'm going to further my encouragement with that and say, don't just bring your Bible, but bring a pen or a highlighter, uh, because that's the benefit of bringing your own Bible, is writing things, making notes in there, questions, comments, whatever it is, it's really, really a great tool, because our desire is to know what the scriptures say. Yeah? yeah. Awesome. We got to get going. It's already quarter after five. Matthew chapter 7 is where we are today, so if you would please turn there, uh, that would be absolutely wonderful. Matthew chapter 7. You know, in my Bible, Lona, it's page 784, but I know in that Bible, it is not that page. Seven, somewhere around there, yep. Yep, yep, New Testament. You guys, this is a scripture that, honestly, I've been looking forward to talking about for some time, because this is... Uh, I think one of the most misapplied chunks of Scripture that we have. Uh, I think there are a lot of them that are like this, but I think this is really a big one, especially in the culture that we live in today. Uh, I'm going to move this because chances are I will pay paying no attention and trip right over it. Um, it, it really is. And, and if you want to throw that picture up, Alice, I saw this picture and I, I just think it's, it's very fitting. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but uh, what it is is on the top of it it says, how people in our world, quote, read the Bible today. And then what it has is Matthew chapter 7, and it has the scripture. You can't see because it it's all crossed out. But there's two words that are circled. The two words are judge not. And then all the rest of it is scribbled out. And then based on those two words, we think we understand what Jesus is saying right here. And that's why I think this really has become... A greatly misapplied scripture. You can go ahead and take that down. Thank you, Alice. And you guys, this is why I really think it's important. And I'm going to re-stress this again. And please don't get distracted. I want to re-stress this. The importance of the context of the scriptures when we study them. The context understanding who's writing it, who it's being written to, and the scriptures that are around it. Because really, it's, it's out of the context that we understand the meaning of what Jesus is saying. You see, a lot of Christians, and, and a lot of non-Christians who know the Bible, because make no mistake about it, there are a lot of non-believers that know the Bible better than me and you do. There really is. And they study it, and you know what? They're great at using it to argue against us. And unfortunately, many of them can win that argument because we've become an illiterate body of believers today. And, and this is why. So what, what people do in and out of our churches is they say, who are you to judge? Who are you to judge me? Jesus himself says that you're not supposed to judge. And then they'll, they'll quote this. Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. And they stop right there. And then you and I, because if we don't study it properly in the context of Scripture and understanding the weight of Scripture, what we do is we say, you're right. Who am I to judge you? And then we walk away from that conversation with our heads hanging and feeling like we can't say a single thing about anything. And that's why this Scripture is so important. It's important, but not just to read a verse. It's important to understand the context of it and to understand the weight of it. Let's read this, just these first six verses of Matthew chapter 7, and then we're going to spend a little time looking at a few pieces of it. Matthew chapter 7, and if you have a red letter Bible, those red letters mean these are words that Jesus spoke. It says this, uh, do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Some of yours, if you have an NIV, it, it it's, talks about the measure that you use. It says this in verse 3, it says, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye 
when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye, and then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Verse 6, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls and then turn and attack you. And, and you guys, so out of this, I think there's a lot here, but, but just to try and make this really clear and keep things focused, I think there's three different points that I want to have that I want to try and extract out of that, those six verses. Keeping in context, we know that this is still Jesus in the Sermon on, a, on the Mount, so he's still in this same conversation. We've spread it out over six weeks. Who knows, this might be a three-hour thing. It could be a 60-minute thing where Jesus just talks for 60 minutes. We don't know, but we've spread it out. This is the same conversation, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. It's all the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is teaching. And at the very start of all this, in chapter 5, verse 1, it says, One day, as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. This is all still that conversation of Jesus teaching his disciples and whoever else is on the peripheral listening into him. The first point that I want to make from this is this. We have to judge. And right now, some of you are thinking, Pastor Bill, you lost your cookies. <laughs> what are you talking about? Here's what I mean by this. And you guys, I want you to stay with me. Please don't get distracted. Please stay with me. We have to judge. We absolutely have to judge. Here's what Jesus is saying in these six verses, you guys. Is he's saying, judge correctly. That's what he's saying. Don't judge. And, and, and I look back, I read, I read so many different versions of the Bible when I'm preparing for a message. I read versions, I read commentaries, I read so many different things to try and get a grip and try and fully understand what is Jesus saying here? What is Jesus teaching us? Honestly, I try and do away with a lot of the things that we see and hear in our churches, and I try and focus. What is Jesus saying in this text in the context? In, 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 the, in the King James Version, I, I love this because this fits right in. It makes perfect sense. If you look online and you read in your Bible app even, in the King James Version, what it says is, do not judge, and then there's a little letter next to it. And if you click on that little letter, what it says is in the Greek, condemn. And that's what Jesus is saying here. What he's saying is, do not condemn, lest you be condemned. You see, this whole thing of judging, it, there, there creates, it creates a wonderful picture. Um, when I say we have to judge, what I mean is we, we every day are judging things, making decisions on things. To judge. If you were to look up the word decide and condemn and look up all of these synonyms, words that mean the same thing, what you're going to find is in the word condemn and the word decide, a synonym of both is guess what word? Judge. And that's something that gets lost in all of these translations and in all of these teachings. You see, if all we do is read this word, don't judge, lest you be judged. All of a sudden it's like, well, I don't want to be judged. I'm not going to say boo. In this sense right here, what Jesus is saying is don't condemn. Here's the definition of the word condemn. To condemn, to express complete disapproval of, typically in public, to censure, to criticize, to denounce, to revile, to blame, to chastise, to berate, to reprimand, to rebuke, to reprove. That's what it means to condemn, to all of a sudden take it and, and bring this punishment on somebody. So he's saying, don't, don't condemn. That's not the right way to do this. He goes on. He says, for the measure that you, that you hold others to is the measure you're going to be held to. How do you want to be treated? And, and another side note here, he's not talking about the judgment of God here. Read the context, my friends. 
He's talking about people treating people and how we treat each other. And, and that's another thing. So many people, that's why all of a sudden we're filled with this overwhelming fear is because, Brian, what we say is, well, I, I'm not going to say that what they're doing is wrong. I'm not, I'm not going to judge this in any way, shape, or form because I don't want God to judge me. Friends, what we do to someone else is not going to change the fact that God is going to judge us. Amen? Whether I judge you or not. He's talking about how we treat one another. All of this has to do with how do you want to be treated? When you do something wrong, do you want to be condemned publicly? Do you want to be torn down? Do you want to be berated? Do you want to be criticized? No. None of us want that. And this is what Jesus is teaching his disciples. The importance of the weight of Scripture. So I, some of you right now, I bet some of you are thinking, Pastor Bill, that's way off. Okay, well then, let me encourage you with the weight of Scripture. And I want you all to understand what I mean by the weight of Scripture. If we want to know what a verse means, in a verse like this where it could be a little bit, um, could cause some tension, could be controversial, then here's what I would say. Okay, well, what does the weight of Scripture say? Don't look at one verse. Look at the book. Look at the Bible. And what does it say? Here's just a few examples of this. In Proverbs chapter 31, the Bible says, Speak up, judge fairly, defend, defend the rights of the poor. Judge fairly. Luke chapter 12, verse 57, Jesus is talking. He says this. He says, well, why don't you just judge for yourselves what is right? Judge. In John chapter 7, verse 24, he says this, Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. In Acts chapter 4, verse 19, Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to listen to him? He says this, You be the judges. You decide. And you see, so the weight of Scripture says this, We are to judge things. What Jesus is saying, friends, is judge correctly. The whole context of the Sermon on the Mount. It's having the right heart. It's having the right motivation. It's doing things correctly as we interact with other people, and it continues into chapter 7. And you guys, here's why I think this is such a big deal. Because there's so many of us that don't speak up at all because of this scripture right here. Each day we, we decide Things. Last week we talked about um, we talked about Proverbs. I think it's twenty one. It's either four or twenty one because we used both of those last weekend. But the proverb says this: it says, "Above all else, guard your heart. Guard your heart above all else." And, and you remember the example I gave: the control center of this computer. Above all else, guard your heart. Well, well, here's the thing: how do we do that? We do that by deciding things, by judging things. We judge. Listen to this. This is just a few of the decisions that you and I make over and over again. Decide, judge if this lifestyle is good or not. Decide, judge if this habit is good or not. Decide, judge if this is a person that you want to date or not. Decide, judge if this is a person you want to marry, that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Decide or judge if you should buy a new car, where you should spend your money, if you want to hang around with certain people or not. Decide, judge if these people are a good influence or not. All of these things, some people would heap up on you and say, you're a judgmental, arrogant Christian because you don't want to hang out with me because I drink too much, because you don't want to hang out with me because I smoke six packs a day or, or because I smoke weed or, or because I, I talk like this or watch this or have these habits. You're just this judgmental Christian. Yep, I am. I, I'll tell you something, you guys. I, I look at Tommy and Kaylee. I love these two kids. You've got to be judgmental. You don't got to be condemning, but you got to make choices. You have to make decisions. You have to choose, is this a person that I'm going to let in my sphere? Remember this. I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bad company corrupts good character. 
How do you decide if it's bad company? You decide by judging. You decide by making a decision. You don't condemn. You don't go to them and say, Courtney, because you wear that hat, what the heck is wrong with you? That hat's cool. Paul, I'm concerned about. You guys understand what I mean? There's a difference here, and that's what Jesus is saying in this. Church, disciples, this is what he's teaching us. Judge, but do it correctly. Don't condemn. And, and I'm going to tell you something. We are guilty of doing plenty of condemning. Amen? Amen? We are. Just read Facebook once in a while. And I can't tell you, the one post, it, they're inviting people to church. The next post, they're calling people names because they're not a Republican or because they're not a Democrat or because they're this or because they're that. Publicly in the open for thousands of people to read, Christians being condemning. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't be condemning. Judge, judge rightly, make these decisions, but do it appropriately. He goes on to this second point, and he says this, and this is where I think we really can learn a lot. I'm going to be right back. There's something that i got to grab. Please don't leave. I know it would be super funny if you did, but please don't. All right, so here's what Jesus says next. Whew. That's my cardio for the whole week right there, by the way. Jesus says this, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye? As I set this down, little pieces of this fell off. Here's one right here. Why worry about the speck? I'm actually out of breath right now. Man, that's pathetic, isn't it? Why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? And this is what Jesus is teaching us, church, disciples. This is the right way to do it. This is the right way. Do the, deal with this first. Deal with this first. First, church, hear me, deal with this first, and this is what we miss. This is what Jesus is telling them. He goes on and he says this, how can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye? You, he says, you hypocrite, hypocrite, you double-minded, two-faced person. Here's what we do. We stand there with our plank in our eye. He says, you can't see past it. I can't see right. I can't direct Tommy. I can't tell Carolyn anything. I can't even see Tim over there. I can see Lona a little bit right here. Here's the thing, you guys. Listen to me. I know this is silly and I look like a complete dork, but do you understand the point? Because this is what Jesus is teaching us in this scripture. He says, do it, but do it rightly. Combine everything I'm teaching you, even in this. Have the right heart. Be meek. Even in this, when you're, when you're making your decisions, when you're judging, don't be condemning. Don't stand up with your... What's this do? Oh. That's a speck. Some of us got bigger specks. Do you understand? Deal with this. He says, deal with this. Don't leave this where it is and then heap up on someone else. And this is one of the things that drives me crazy about the church's stance on homosexuals. The church's stance on, on young people living together. It drives me crazy because we look at it as this is the biggest and the worst. But church, we sit here with a pornography rate amongst us that just is growing beyond what any of us can imagine. And so we sit here with our plank in our eye. You know why? Because we do it in the privacy of our own home, church. We do it, and, and with our plank in our eye, we get up on our pedestal, and we call out this young person, we call out this couple, and we call out those people. We call out those that wear it on their sleeves, those that are a little bit more visible. 
and we say to them, what's wrong with you? And we say to them, how come you're doing this? And we condemn them. We don't even do it with love in our hearts. We condemn them. We chastise them. We berate them. We criticize them. And this is exactly the thing Jesus is saying, don't do it. He says, get rid of this first. Listen, get rid of your plank, and then you can do it. But it starts here. Do you know something that I prayed Monday night? I I meet with a team of people, and and the thing that I prayed for us is that everything that we do, we're praying for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We're praying for healing. We're praying for God to move in our lives. We're praying for, for, for our healing in all these different areas. And you know the prayer is? Let it start with us. Let it start with me. Let it start right here, because I don't want to do this. Church, if we want to reach people, if we want to speak truth to people, then by God, it's got to start with us. We can't stand on our pedestal. We can't get up and and have the plank in our eye while we call out everybody else. We can't even see clear to do that. You know, my prayer, every service, what what I consider is this, is what do we... God, what do we want tonight? And you know what's heavy on my heart is that the Lord right now would convict us. Would make us extremely uncomfortable with his presence about our plank. Because I believe the truth in the scripture is is he wants us to reach out to our brother. The direction he's given us is how to do it correctly. You see, friends, I think that with the mindset the church has in defining everything as judging, how many people, stop and think for just a minute, how many people are not sitting in the chairs next to you that once were? And how many of them you know they've wandered away, but because we don't want to judge anybody, because, because of the judging label we have, we don't call them. We don't check on them. Well, what if we do it right? What if we do it right? Because understand the context of this. And, and I really believe this. Jesus is talking to the disciples, and I imagine him with the disciples around him, and he says this. He, he says, Matthew. Matthew. Why do you try and tell John to take the speck from his own eye when, when you got a plank in yours? Matthew. First worry about your plank. And then you can go to your brother. Then you can go and you can, and you can tell him. And in, in your Bibles where it says friend, some of these versions say friend. And again, if you click, if you're on your Bible app and you click the little letter next to the word, what it's going to go to is Greek, brother. That's what it means. It says brother. And so what that tells me is in the context, what he's talking about is disciple. When you talk to a disciple, here's how you do it. Friends, how many other disciples, how many of the brothers, parts of the family, are we missing because we're afraid to call and say, what are you doing? Where are you at? Why are you allowing this in your life? And Jesus is giving us the recipe right here. Do it. Do it with love. Do it having dealt with yourself first. That's the second thing, friends. Start with yourself. Whatever God is stirring in you right now, whatever the Holy Spirit is convicting you of right now, can I just encourage you, deal with it. Deal with whatever it is, because then you are more equipped, better equipped, scripturally equipped to go to your brother, to go to the other believers and reach out to them, because he says to do it. He says, hypocrite, first, first, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. You see? That's the part we miss. Underline that, highlight that, make a note of that somewhere. Jesus is saying, deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Deal with it. Do it right. Don't be afraid to. Don't steer away from it. You see somebody going off, you see him doing this or that. Deal with it. Help him. Reach out to him. Embrace him. Call him back into the fold. Convict him. But do it right. It's got to start with us. That's the second thing. The third thing is this. And this is this chunk of scripture that absolutely makes no sense. None at all. Let's read it. It says this. It, my NLT version, it says, Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls and then turn and attack you. What in the world? 
I mean, seriously, it's like, Jesus, what, why do you throw that in there? All, just out of nowhere, you're, you're going through all of these things, pretty clear, this makes sense, I can understand this. And then you start talking about pigs and dogs and pearls and all, seriously? Here's what I believe Jesus is, is saying right there. He's, he says, you have to discern. You have to discern as you're dealing with people. Because in the context, and here's what I want to encourage you with, friends. You come across these scriptures that make no sense, don't accept that they make no sense. Seriously. Do not accept that it makes no sense. Dig. Grab hold of that scripture and dig until it makes sense. Until you feel like, yes, Jesus, this is what I believe you're teaching us here. That's what I did with this. I have read and I have read and I've gotten a headache after headache because I want to know. I'm tired of, of this just doesn't make sense. I don't want to be that way anymore. And so in the context of everything he is saying here, he's quoting a parable, something that these Jewish people would have been familiar with. And he's saying, discern this. Understand something. As you go to your brother, as you reach out to them, you have to understand something. They may not receive what you have for them. They may not want that truth. And, and you have to be willing to understand that. They might not be ready for that truth. They might push back against you. And you have to be wise about that. When Jesus sends out the disciples, he says, if you go into a town and, and, and they don't receive then shake the dust from your really cool boots. And move on. That's a hard teaching. But you can't force people. You can't. As you do this, even as you do it right, understand something. We have to have discernment. We have to. We have to understand the heart of the person we're talking to. We have to understand who, who, who this is. Where are they at? They might not be in the spot to hear it. And you know what else? It may just be that they're not in the spot to hear it from you. How many of you have a family member? It's like you want them to know Jesus in the worst way, and they just will not receive it from you. Raise your hand if that's you. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what you should be praying? Then God, open a door for someone else to reach them because it, it, it ain't going to be me. To have discernment. To understand. God, I want to do this and I want to do this right. I don't want to be condemning. I don't want to be judgmental in that way. But, but God, I want to make smart decisions. I, I want to be wise as I guard my heart above all else. God, help me make these decisions. God, as I go as I go out into the world, as I go to talk to my brethren, God, give me this discernment that I need. Help me to know, God, when I'm throwing my pearls and they're just going to get trampled on and, and it's just going to be wasted. God, help me to know when I'm, just, when I'm throwing to the dogs. Help me to know, God, when this is not the right time. Help me to know, God, the words to speak. God, help me to know. And next week, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on in the context where Jesus is talking about praying. And it goes right in line with this. And you know what's cool? Is it makes sense. It makes sense. You guys, I want, I want to ask you to stand for a minute with me today. I, I'm really, I, I love that we stand at the end like this. You know what we should do is you should stand and I should sit. Here's what I believe happens. Some of you, I see your eyes and I watch it gets warm in here and I watch some of your faces get red. Some of you, it's just your ears. It's crazy. Your ears get really red when you get warm, some of you. Some of you start to nod and I think that standing, it changes something. Because now all of a sudden, maybe you're a little more awake. And, and you guys, here's what I know is this. I know, I know that the Holy Spirit moves among us. I know that the Word of God is alive. And I know that when we read the Word of God, it penetrates our hearts. And I know without doubt that tonight, in the last hour 
I'm not going to tell you how long because you're going to get nervous then. But the last bit of time, I know that there are people in this room that God has stirred something inside of you. I believe it could be any number of things, but the things that come to my mind are this, this plank. Some of you right now, God is convicting you. He's convicting you of this right here. You have one of these. And it's been sticking in your eyes so long and it's blinded you to so many things in your life that, that maybe you've allowed to come in because you're not seeing clearly. But here's the other thing. Exactly what Jesus is saying is you have this in your life and it is blinding. It is, it is hindering your view of other people. Understand this. The people that God has given you to witness to. The people that God has handed to you to say, Luann, this, this, this is you. It's like a farmer in a field. Here, Luann, this is your corner of the harvest. Go and, and reach them. But sometimes for us, we get this stuck in our eye, and we can't even see clearly to treat them the right way, to love them the way they needed. And maybe today, this is exactly how the Holy Spirit is stirring in you. Maybe he's stirring in you a, a healing, something that you need to get rid of, a cleansing, a sinful thing that's buried deep inside. Maybe it's a, a habit that nobody else knows about. It's a secret thing. And he's saying to you, this is what I want you to be rid of because this is your plank and this it's hindering you. It's, it's keeping you from the fullness of what I have for you. For some of you, I believe this. I believe that the Holy Spirit, he's given you, in a sense, he's given you a grocery list of people that he wants you to reach. As soon as I said people that are missing from the chairs, some of you, names started coming to your mind. Faces started coming to your mind. And I believe that's the Holy Spirit saying, Miriam, I want you to call these people. Glory, I want you to reach these people. I want you I want you to encourage them some of you right now you're feeling this overwhelming sense like you've been throwing pearls that just continuously get trampled and you, and you feel like God just gave you permission to stop he just gave you this discernment to say, I want you to focus elsewhere. Leave this for someone else. I want you to focus elsewhere. But church, I believe that God speaks to us in the quiet, in the stillness. He speaks to us. What is he saying to you tonight? Just you. And will you trust him? As you leave tonight, will you say, yes, Lord, I hear your voice. Yes, Lord, I, I understand. Yes, God, yes. Will you trust him? Because, friends, the more we do that, the more we are going to reach unchurched and unsaved people. And isn't that why we're here? Amen? Father, we thank you so much again for the truth of your word. And God, it just